Hey everyone, welcome to group break number 225. Today we have the Series 1 mixer. We got three retail boxes of 2020-21 Series 1, uh, one of 2019-20 Series 2 Hobby, one of 2021 Series 2 Hobby, and some 1920 Ice, some 1920 Chronology, and some 2021 SP Game Use. Again, uh, the one thing to note with this break is that for Chronology, if we do pull an XRC Redemption, uh, one goes to the Rangers, two goes to the Senators, three goes to the Wild because it is uh, Lafreniere, uh, Stutzla, Kaprizov, those are the orders. It's not publicly listed, but like I've seen someone get all the redemptions in, so I know what they are. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyways, uh, the cards are live as well, so we, we know what they are at this point. So uh, just clearing that up before the break starts. But anyways, um, let's get into the team random so we just came off of an insane team canada juniors four boxer uh if you haven't seen that go back and watch it um i don't want to spoil anything we didn't hit the best patch auto but we hit one of the top ones so um along with a just bunch of other really good stuff so here we go uh team random time three times on the names three times on the teams who you line up with is who you get again thank you everyone for the support on the breaks and just in general uh it's been a lot of fun uh love doing them so three times on the names three times on the teams once twice and third time and i'm really looking forward to maybe some new product coming up soon so uh about three four weeks away from series one hopefully knock on wood teams once twice Third time, Columbus on top, Buffalo on the bottom. Here we go. Uh, Andy, you've got the Blue Jackets, Emil with the Oilers, Ravi with the Devils, Ivy with the Penguins, Bill with the Bruins, Blake, you got the Canucks, there's a PC team for you, Mark with the Kings, uh, Olivia with the Avalanche, Mark with the Wild, uh, Dante with the Flames, Nick with the Sharks, uh, Jogandeep, you've got the Rangers, uh, Jonathan, you've got the Blues. Chris with the Habs. Callum with the Leafs. Jonathan with the Senators. Uh, Daniel with the Predators. Nelson with the Stars. Robert with Chicago. Benoit with the Lightning. Uh, Bill with the Yotes. Emil with the Vegas Golden Knights. Jogan Deep with the Capitals. The Pack Crackers, you got the Panthers. Uh, Jogan Deep with the Islanders. Nelson with the Hurricanes. Marshall with the Ducks. Emil with the Flyers. Livio, you've got the Jets. Cody with the Red Wings. And Martin with the Sabres. So there are your teams. Let's them into the team viewer. Yeah, we were just talking right before this break. Sorry about who we think we'll see in a series one for young guns. I mean, we know Caulfield's one of them, which his height's kind of died down a little bit. So, um, be interesting to see kind of where he lands. I know I'm sure a lot of the people that had their like pre-sell buys that typically go up on ebay are pretty annoyed but that's what happens when you do stuff like that so um here we go team viewer and if there's ever any discrepancies between the team viewer and the randoms it goes to what was in the randoms it should be the exact same because it's just pulling the data so uh seagrass is i think i i want to see byfield is going to be really interesting if he didn't get injured he would have more hype but also he got injured at a key age so like a little bit worried but not real like i don't know i i i want to go all in on byfield i really think he is very 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 good okay so he's playing he's playing again right 21 22 is this year that's good to see I mean, we all know Kodak Black is a Panthers fan, but. But yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully we get some series one. Yeah, Byfield is, uh, I've loved watching him play. Like, it's just, it's so weird to see, like, not weird, but like, someone his size with those hands and like, um like just his overall skill set is just the stuff that he is able to do is just insane and 
as long as he continues doing what he's been doing throughout his entire thing, then uh, then he'll be a dominant player. So they have literally like Kopitar successor there, which is cool to see. So, um, yeah. Yeah, Spencer Knight will be interesting. There's going to be a lot of good goalies. You got Swayman, you got Ukopeka Lukanen, I think is a long-term kind of, you know, he probably will be a buy low right now. But Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a very good description. So I actually, like, again, if I'm doing that draft, I'm taking him first overall. Like I said that, I'm fairly consistent on record of saying that. So we'll start off with the retail, and then we'll probably go Series 2 hobby, Series 1 hobby, SP Game Use, Chronology, Ice. But yeah, I love to uh, watch him. I, one of my friends is out in Sudbury and was just so excited when he actually committed to the Wolves. So, like, he didn't do the typical, I want to play, well, not the typical, but the uh, the London Knights uh, money under the table shenanigans. That's, like, honestly one of my favorite parts about junior hockey is that, like, how often London gets players to decommit, and it's, like, it's just always a little bit suspicious. Always a little bit suspicious. Like, good luck, everyone. Here we go. I think I said hi, but... Um, it's not been high. Uh, we're going to rip in Sack Series 1 as well, just because... It's retail, it's kind of, you get your six young guns, sometimes seven, your four canvas, your four portraits, your jersey card, and that's your, that's your break. So there are some variations, but like those are super hard to hit and we will be able to pick them up. There's been a lot of hockey news since we, uh, Lasted a break over trades. Um, seeing some early signs of uh, players that'll be on Olympic teams. So it, the Olympics are going to be interesting if they happen. Happen. There are rumors that Team Canada is looking at getting NHL players with both playing time. And like trying to get them out of the NHL, but they said like no. The NHL was just like, no, we can't do that. So Oh, that would be kind of funny. Cause I think one of the players is like Michael Delzato, so. Yeah, they're I think we pulled them one time. Uh they're like one in what, seventy two hundred packs? Uh, yeah, 7,200. I think we pulled them once, so, like, we're honestly kind of probably do at this point. Okay. Here we go. But, again, they're really obvious. Bergeron for the Bruins. Liljegren for the Leafs on the Young Guns. Uh, this is a base pack, right? Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's a base pack. One, two, three, five, six. Manta for Detroit on the jersey. Oh, yeah, it was last year that he got traded, right? Rust for the Penguins on the canvas. Bodam for Chicago on the Young Guns. Fairly standard start. But yeah, it's, it's rare that you see them, but you do see them every once in a while. So we're honestly probably due for like the draft SP or a puck drop. Uh, Eichel for the Sabres. Nothing there. Nothing there. Soderstrom for the no for the Yotes. Happy New Year, Bill. I think that's actually for you. Zook for the wild. And base pack. Fairly straightforward. Alright, let me get the base up a little bit quicker than normal. 
It's gonna. I forget how quickly it stacks up. Yeah. Uh, another good point that was brought up in uh, I'm just listening to the radio today. Uh, was the trade deadline's gonna be really interesting with how many teams are tight to the cap. And there's not really going to be a ton of room for some of the top teams to make trades without LTIRing. The break here with uh, not just Arizona, Arizona and Boston. Although Boston, I guess you do have some high upside, at least in the chronology. And Arizona, at least you have some young guns. Could be worse. Could be worse. Not much, but could be worse. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Vegas will probably... Pacioretty is going to be the interesting part, the most interesting part of that. Um, just whether or not he actually comes back during the regular season. So McDavid for the Oilers. Uh, base pack. Five, six, seven, eight. Base pack. Van check for the Capitals. Connor for the Jets. Darlene for the Sabres. Uh, what team will take on Kane? Honestly, it's probably going to be the Oilers. Pashnak for the Bruins. Just given everything that we've heard, or not the Bruins, the, the Oilers, yeah, um, on that. On the Kane, not the Pashnak. That's for the Bruins. So, hang on, I need to recount. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's been nothing here. All base, lots of base. Ustamenko. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yossi. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And Eichel for the Sabres. Uh, we did get our, we got five young guns. So I think we're short a young gun somehow. So we got one, two, we got our regular, no, we're, we're missing a portraits and a young guns. That's weird. And definitely not missing any, so. But yeah, I think it'll be the Oilers that take on Evander Kane. I mean, it's honestly, just looking at the if you only if your only thing is caring about winning like you don't care about people then that move in a vacuum like makes sense but the problem is that the world we live in isn't in a vacuum and the dude's had so many chances and he just hasn't like, he's been bad. Um, I mean, you know, there's there's so much on record about it, but I will throw in an overtime pack because we're missing a young gun there. Um, that'll just be a random at the end. Like, I think the guy is first off, like, in deep financial trouble. Um, and like this is from someone who cheered for Evander Kane when he was a 15 year old 16 year old hockey player playing for the Giants I was a big Evander Kane fan a lot of time in the world for him and then like you know at a certain point you run out of chances and like you know it's just there's a lot of when not one, but two teams, like at least two teams on record with Winnipeg and um, San Jose not wanting to play with him. 
Like, I don't care what reviews you get from former players. You're obviously, like, like, let's not forget, on top of everything else that happened in San Jose this year, um, and, like, on to like, literally on top of everything that happened in San, like, with him in San Jose, the entire team essentially didn't want to want him to be on the team to the point where they were, like, trade, re like, rumored trade requests. Uh, this is a backwards base card. That's a little confusing. So, like, you know, anytime they just say they're talking to former players, like, there's a reason he had his clothes thrown in the shower in Winnipeg by the captain of the team. There's a reason that the Sharks didn't want to play with him. Like, that's two teams. On top of, like, everything else, it's, you know, it's one of those just, like, he he shouldn't like in the fact that like he's just instantly able to get another contract is kind of i don't know yeah cassian is cassian slightly different i would put cassian in a bit of a different ballpark because cassian is he did go to rehab and it wasn't repeated things so, uh, Couture for the Sharks, Soderstrom for the Yopes. So I think that's where the big difference is, is that Cassian did legitimately get a second chance and he, um, since then hasn't like done anything that we know of. So, um, uh, for that, I think, you know, you gotta say he's deserved his second chance. Whereas Kane's had three, four, five, like so many chances. Kopitar for the Kings. This is just the backwards Hudden. Uh, nice Robertson for the Stars. I mean, like, honestly, I... I just... I feel just weird, because it's... I grew up as a big fan of Evander Kane. Like, 15-year-old, 16-year-old me was a big fan of Evander Kane. Flurry for Vegas? I mean, like, I have a lot of Kane rookie year stuff because he played for the Giants and I like the way he played. Um, but, like, he's just... He's lost all of my, like, kind of respect type of thing. Hardly for the Stars. Nashville for the Predators and like I don't think you can you can't really reward it past a certain point so stamp goes for the lightning so I will say the uh the biggest thing that will um make or break it is the NHL investigation because if the NHL wants to I think they could probably suspend them for a lot longer than 21 games um given his second violation I mean like Providing a fake vaccine passport and, um, is just stupid for one. Um, like, you're going to get caught, especially at the, like, pro level. The only way you don't get caught is if the team wants you there. And, like, you know, but, yeah. It's just, it's another one of those things. It's like... You know, we look back at, you know, the tough, the Kyle Beach story. Um, winning was placed as the number one priority over everything, including, you know, a person's health, safety, mental health, and the entire organization's health. And, like, it's kind of sad. You know, I wish, I wish as a society we put a little bit more on making sure, you know, people that... Like, not asking, you know, everyone to go out and work, you know, 20 volunteer hours every weekend and, like, be the absolute, like, nicest person in the world, but, like, just treat other people with respect type of thing. And, like, that should be kind of the bare minimum when you're a pro athlete as well. So, I don't know. It's a, it's a weird situation. I 
Again, he's gonna get a contract. It's just whether or not the NHL will, like, essentially he will get a contract uh, because Kane is talented enough to get a contract. Um, you know, if his name was say like Mike Richards and the team, I think like I think San Jose was happy, honestly, probably happy that the violation happened because they could get rid of him. That's the third Bobby Ryan base of the break, by the way. Shabbat for the Senators. Uh, Berdeen for the Jets, but yeah, like, I just, he's going to get a contract because he's talented, um, but that doesn't mean he should get a contract type of thing. Like, at a certain point, we have to stop rewarding that. Mikey Anderson for the Kings, because, like, it says that, like, hey, if you're good enough at something, like, if you're good enough at hockey, like, you'll love you for the Canucks, but you're a bad person. Like, you, you'll you still be fine. And it's like, that's not really a good message to send to people. Rask for the Bruins? I'm happy to see him back in the league. But yeah. Anyways, that's kind of like my thoughts on that subject. Again. Can I agree to disagree, but Bellows for the Islanders? Again, I, I don't think the NHL is going to be keen on having him back in the league. Ekman Larson for the Yotes. And base pack. I think that was all of our young guns, right? Uh, yep. Yep, we got all of our young guns there. So, cool. We just didn't get the jersey card. That's weird. But, yeah. I I'm hope, like... I would be shocked if the NHL investigation was like, it's it's gonna get messy. Like it it that whole battle is going to be messy. I think the reason the NHLPA had to challenge it is because a violation of COVID protocol warranting the like the precedent behind that, where if it's a violation, whether accidentally or intentionally, like warranting the termination of a contract like you kind of have to make sure that that's not what is causing it and i think in this case they're just gonna make it kind of like show that it was the second time that he violated it that caused the contract to be terminated because the whole second chance stuff but yeah it's just uh it's gonna get messy so I would not be shocked to see it drag on for a little bit. The Oilers, on the other hand, like, not going all in when you have McDavid and Dreisaitl. Like, the fact that they're not willing to trade prospects or their first-round pick when they have legitimately two of the five best players in, the ho in hockey right now, if not, like, two of the top three. I don't know. It's just weird. Like, I don't know how Ken Holland still a GM, but hey. Alright, back to the break though. I mean, box two is solid. Box two had the Robertson Young Nips. Uh very good one to get. So what will box three bring us? Patterson for the Canucks. I hope he can get it together. I think he can. He just missed a lot of time, so we got to remember that. Like, he missed a lot of time, and I think it's, like, it's just a struggle right now for him. Evans for the Habs. That's a long time without the card. Good drill for the Flames. Patterson for the Canucks. Carlson for the Capitals. Yeah, anything else hockey related you want to talk about? Trade deadline. Benson for the Oilers. Uh, prospects. Stuff like that. What players to look out for? Okay, 
It's got to be. Okay. Uh, Kershaw for Chicago on the Young Gun canvas. And Ingram for the Predators on the Young Gun. So that was everything there. Some of these series, series one used to be so consistent, but it is not now. Ooh, there go the sirens. There's a lot of flooding again out here today with all the snow and then just torrential rain. Oh yeah, series one in particular, because like you have base packs, um, is crazy. Series two is so like, series two retail is one of, again, my favorite bang for your buck products. Because you get all the OPG rookies and like, Young guns, you get everything you could ever want. So. Oh yeah, yeah, you can't trade Petey. You, the only way, and I mean only way you trade like, you trade a Pedersen like player is if you're getting someone like say Barzell back. The only way you can do that, but even then like, that's a tough bet. You, like I think PD is, I think he'll be fine. Uh, oh, but yeah. Uh, when do you think cards will start coming back out again? Um, honestly, I it's there's no real answer for that. Um. Once we're out of a pandemic, because like, again, I know there are a couple people that asked. Um, honestly, I don't even think if Fanatics had a license that the cards would be coming out on time. I think we would get less certain release dates, but it's, yeah, it's not great. Reduke for Vegas, like, it's a weird spot. Huberdo for the Panthers. And like it, it's definitely frustrating not having new cards and having products a while out. I think they might need to like plan slightly better. Lunchroom for the Red Wings. Have less rookie based products as well. Marner for the Leafs. So. Oh, S there's no way they separate SPA. DiPietro for the Canucks. There is no way they combine SPA. Uh, Kachuk for the centers, but like they're gonna come out very close together. Parisi for the wild on the jersey. Robertson for the Leafs on the young guns. And Bellardi for the Kings on the rookie. So it's a more normal box, but um, I think Again, like just they cut ice, they cut trilogy. I get why they did that. What they're doing with ice is that they're putting it into um, next year's ice, which makes sense. Um, I would like to see them do that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I got, I get the first Tim set because that's an every year thing. They probably have a contract for them. They probably were printed or at least agreed to in advance that's the that's the one thing is that they're probably expected it to be better and like those are like the reality of the business side of things is that like their license with Tim's is probably more important than getting a hobby product out on time because there's a licensing like you dealing with another company rather than like your own, if that makes sense, you know. And move this further away. Oh yeah, Synergy Synergy is a product that they should probably cut. But like if they go back to combining products, like instead of having, you know, twenty, I think twenty four to thirty products in a given year, like drop it down to even twenty. Um uh, we'll rip it stack series two hobby. 
it'd, it'd be good. But yeah, like I, I was a little bit frustrated when I saw the Team Canada hockey stuff come out from Tim's. Like, it's nice because it's cheap and accessible for new people to get into it. But it's frustrating when you haven't had a legit hobby product. And like, I love MVP. Don't get me wrong. I am one of the biggest like. MVP has a ton of time and place uh, in their product rotation cycle, uh, people out there. But, like, it's. They need to catch up with their current stuff. Uh, the, the release, it kind of, you know, the, the signature Legends Editions, again, I just said that they need to diversify with non, like, rookie products because it'll probably be easier to keep up with it, but. That product got delayed a lot. So, and it, yeah. And again, I get that we're in a pandemic and it is tough. Like, I think, you know, we need to, we do need to cut a certain amount of slack there because it is a pandemic. So, uh, Hoaglander for the Canucks on the Young Guns. Nice one. Uh, McNiven for the Habs on the Portraits and Kudobin for the Stars. French variations. Uh, Kid Ranta for the stars. Broberg for the Oilers. Uh, Skinner for the Oilers. Uh, Cup Premier Ultimate Black Diamond Metal Ice SPA SP Game Use SPX Series One Series Two OPG MVP. Uh, I would like to see them bring back um, credentials. I really like credentials as a product and I'd like to see a couple more flex products. I like extended. I don't like extended this year, but Jake Evans for the Habs on the young and canvas. Cause honestly the contents weren't the best, but and artifacts, artifacts as well. I'm, I like artifacts as well. Yeah. Headman for the lightning and Olsen for the Sabres canvas and dazzlers. Zumula for the flyers. Yeah, just artifacts hobby. Yeah, I, I agree there. So, Di Pietro for the Canucks. I'd like to see them do more like a Chronicles type product where they just put a bunch of sets together. Sharon go it for the Devils. Like, you know, put stuff and like experiment there. McLeod for the Oilers on the red. OPG rookie. Legacy for the Oilers. All the young guns are a little bit off centered, by the way, on the foil. Um, you know, I, I like to see card companies experiment with new card designs and stuff. And like, I think they should absolutely have a space for that. Um, and I think a Chronicles type product would be a very, very good one. And again, it would allow you to have the space to put in your autograph cards that don't get in in time into the product so like you know instead of putting your ryan lingren opg rookie autos into or your guillaume brisebois opg rookie autos into next year's opg platinum you put them into your chronicles extended type product like you make it an update product and you have fun with that product you experiment with designs you you know, you make it like 2011, 12 series two was where, there, where there's multiple hits per pack. You do that type of stuff with it. You have fun with it. And I think it'd be a, I think it'd be a good product, but yeah. Like you do ultimately have to have some change ups. Like I'm someone who I think like, honestly, you could combine black diamond and SPX. Honestly, like you could, for, for the most part, I think a lot of Black Diamond stuff and SPX stuff goes hand in hand and you can make a very compelling argument that you take the best of both products and then you have a really, really solid product. Dry Settle for the Oilers. Uh, Geeky for the Hurricanes. Radish for the Rangers. You'll levy on the rookie materials for the Canucks. Colasar for Vegas. 
Paul Mary for the Devils. Yeah, I again, I I think there's definitely a way that they can get. There's a way that they can get back. I don't know how they catch up quite on products without kind of combining stuff at this point. So, uh, Nigel for the Sharks. They are trying to speed up releases from just their scheduled release dates right now compared to last year. So, but. also I will say I did open up a box of MVP hobby just to see if it'd be good for breaks. Um, under for the stars on the portraits. It is not as good as last year for breaks. Like there's not a guaranteed of number cards. My box didn't have any, honestly. It wasn't like, it's not that great compared to previous years, but it is very good for kids. I will continue to bang that drum. Coughlin for Vegas. It's not for breaks, but absolutely if you have a kid or someone you know that's getting into collecting, it'd be a fun break. Dry settle for the Oilers on the retro. And I will say the card quality is much higher than series two and series one. The base cards just slide and it's nice. Broberg for the Oilers. Again, not every product has to be aimed at hobby or pure investment. Hamilton for the Hurricanes, and I think MVP does a good job of that. I mean, you can still hit some insanely rare stuff, but at the end of the day, it is a very, it's a very kid and like new collector friendly product, and you you need those. You know, it kind of goes like MVP would be kind of the the gateway product see i love metal universe absolutely love it i love pmgs i love the design i am a sucker for it but again i think you know you could do a little bit more of that product you could go back to free retro yeah, it is not everyone's cup of tea. That is absolutely by far one of the most divisive sports card products. Like, it is, it is, you either love it or you hate it and there's no in between. And like, there's no one that's really just like, it, there's not a ton of people at least that are just indifferent on Metal Universe. People either really like it or really don't like it. And like that, obviously that would change depending on what the price point's at for the product. But, you know, it is, yeah. See, yeah, see, I was just gonna say, uh, Flare Showcase had metal cards in it. You could bring that back. Again, yes, it's adding more patch autos. Um, oh, I, yeah, no, you had ice in your list. You could bring that back um, or just just have a way to have PMGs in a product. Like, I don't care how you do it. Get PMGs or a card style like that into a product because they're one of my favorite card designs. So red cards from Tim Hortons are PMGs, but cheaper. And I just, it's, again, it's one of my favorite card designs. It is absolutely a product that is entirely based on the nostalgia of collecting. And so, yeah. The, the cost of the box is what gets most people and that is honestly very fair. McKinnon for the Avalanche. But Kachero for the Lightning, it is it also produces like monster cards in value. And like the cards do generally hold value well. Hirose for the Red Wings. Um, I mean, if we want to talk about a product that wasn't well liked, uh, Hellbuck for the Jets. It was Fleer Retro. Do we have a one of one? Oh no, it's an 0506. Uh, or sorry, tribute of Gretzky for the Rangers. That's a tribute, right? Yeah, UD30. Uh, Fleer Retro 1213, I believe. You could get it for 60 bucks a box for a hobby box. And like it was essentially, it was essentially had the PMGs, had other stuff in it. Uh, couldn't move it off shelves. Then all of a sudden, well, Adam Fox for the Rangers, nice young gun. Um, all of a sudden people are just like, hey, this is PMGs. Hey, this is Jambalaya's. And it skyrocketed in price within like 
I don't know. It was a very short amount of time, so. Paling for the Habs, sorry, the cards are all stuck together. Buffum for the Jets, like, those products will generally age somewhat well just because they're set, like, set collectors are going to want PMGs and They've kind of just got the hype of being one of those cards that you have to have. Trocheck for the Panthers. Timmons for the Avs. Yeah, it's, it's not everyone's cup of tea, and that, that's fine. Like, not every product has to be for every person. So, Generation Next of Barzell. So. Oh, yeah. I... I'm sad I sold my Gretzky one. I mean, I got, I got five times what I paid for it, um, and I got it in a lot, so it paid for five times the lot. But it is now worth four times that price. So, but hey, it is a cool card, and I used it to. Fun life investment, which is this place that I'm living in. <laughs> so they are really nice cards, though. Like again, there's room, there's room for a product like that for me. I think they could either make it like a lower price point and more accessible, or really up the value because that at its current price point, like it was kind of. Like you have to be really, really into the product. And there are people that are. Like I got a couple boxes of it myself. Like I'm just being straight up honest and my boxes weren't great, but I got them. They were fun to open. I didn't get a PMG, which I was very upset about. But from two random boxes, not getting one is kind of frustrating. Uh, Crosby on the shooting stars. It's missing some foil there. Uh, UD30, Patrick Waugh for the Habs. But again, I'd rather it happen to me than someone else. I did get a good auto at the very least. Uh, Bishop for the stars. I got a Tavares auto. But yeah, like they were probably two of the worst boxes that I've seen. Kubalik for Chicago on the young guns. But hey, not every box can be a winner. So Ovechkin for the Capitals. I just wish at the price point you were guaranteed a PMG. Because that would make it a lot more justifiable because that's off for the capitals line a for the jets we don't fought for the kings hurdle for the sharks came for chicago The tang for the penguins. And Bastion for the Devils. So uh not bad. We ended up with an Adam Fox. A uh, League's not bad either. Uh Robertson being their best one out of series one, not the best, but again. Unfortunately can't all be winners. Alright, let's do SP game use because it is the one with the lowest potential out of them all. I'd say, eh, I guess probably not. Ooh, box 94 and 77. This would be a box that I would buy. Got some lucky numbers on it. I'd say ice, honestly, out of all these, ice has the highest end potential with the the ice premieres rookie patch autos, which someone got on a car from it at the uh, Canada Collectors Convention thing. So, ooh, I think we do have a, we have a patch in a good spot. Maybe we have a Supreme. We'll go to here. All right. Banner year. Pedersen for the Canucks. Uh, nice framework of dry saddle for the Oilers. Uh, Tristan Jari, all-star fabrics for the Penguins. Logan Stanley on the authentic rookies for the Jets to 199 uh, Heritage Classic Banner. You haven't seen too many of these. Sean Monahan for the Flames and 
Supreme patches, Radulov from the stars. Nice, nice box of SP game use. Good framework. Uh, Supreme patch to 15. Nice little patch there. Nice little box. Man. Not the like biggest RO, like biggest cards, but some solid stuff. I know the dry saddle frameworks is probably a decent value card as well. So cool. All right, let's do chronology. I guess chronology technically you have Gretzky autos, but I don't know. I'm feeling I'm feeling a good card out of ice today. And if I get it wrong, then so be it. Like honestly, I hope I'm wrong and chronology is the best product and that we get something sick out of ice. So. Alright, here we go. Hishier for the devil, so 222. And Barrett Hayden on the Timeless Memories Auto for the Yotes, numbered one of only ten. Barrett Hayden for the Yotes. LeBanc for the Sharks on the autograph, and the big B for Huberto. So again. Barrett Hayden may not be your favorite rookie from last year's crop, but he was one that was highly valued by Upper Deck, so like that would be technically a nice hit. Um, and hey, Bill, that's the Yotes card to 10. So you had Yotes to start the year, but you hit a good Yotes card at the very least. <laughs> it's like... Barrett Hayden's one of those weird players. Like, I didn't like where he was drafted. Then, like, you see what he could play like. And he's like, okay, I get it. But then you see it more, and it's like, I don't know how he survives at the NHL level. Like, he's a fun player, but hopefully he can stay healthy. So, I love those cards, though. And honestly, like, having Hayden not be a redemption is a miracle. All right, two off the back. Let's get him a car. My car ice rookie to 99. Let's go. Nope, oh, that's 9.99. Green of Ajo for the Hurricanes. And Leskinen for the Haps. And do we have a 99? Ooh, 249. All right. Now we're talking. Besser for the Canucks on the green. Branchroom for the centers, 22 of 249. All right, jersey card. This is a uh, rookie threads, I'm guessing. Orange of Taylor Hall for the Yotes and Hirose for the Red Wings to 199 on the rookie relic jumbo. This is probably going to be an exquisite base, in my guess. Well, that might be. Might be an auto. I think it's an update to be honest. Came for Chicago. Hag for oh yeah, that's an auto. Uh and an update. Hag for Vegas to 149 on the Ice Premiers. And Millsat for the Buffalo Sabres on the Exquisite Rookie Auto update from 1819. So see, this is where I like how Upper Deck can do updates sometimes. Where hey, it is the bonus hit in the box. Because this will also be a hit. Like, it just, it's so much more enjoyable from an opening experience. Kessel for the Yotes and Bemstrom for the Blue Jackets. So that is the break. No randoms to do. Um, honestly, a little bit of a, some good, some bad, some meh. Uh, top hit. I mean, take your pick between the dry settle frameworks, the Barrett Hayden to 10, Chronology Framework, Timeless Memories, Green Auto, uh, the Exquisite Rookie Auto of Middlestat, uh, the Supreme Patches. Oh, we do have the one random, sorry. Fox and Robertson on the Young Guns. So uh, we were missing one Young Gun in our Series 1 boxes, so let me just get a 31-teamer set up for the overtime pack because that is it. All right, here we go. Three times, team on top gets it once. Twice, third time, the Capitals. That was, I think, Dragon Deep. Yep, there we go. So that one's yours. 
uh, just because we were missing that. But yeah, overall, I mean, hey, should be fun. Um, next week, next week will be probably no Team Canada Juniors next week. Um, I'm not quite certain. Probably. What did I have in there? Uh, I'm just gonna end this. Uh, I'm gonna cut the video, but. Uh,